Hello, my name is Patrick Zorkos, and this is my CSV programming assignment. The purpose of this program is to read in comma-separated values from a file and sort them according to user select criteria. I have selected a file containing the names of NBA basketball players, their team, number of games played, and information about their number of free throws. My program contains two classes, one to store the main program, and another to store the constructors and methods of the objects. Among the variables in the main class, are two integers called fields and records, which tell the program that eight fields and 137 records exist in the file. The program also creates an array called data, which holds the information between each comma in the original file. You can see the data file here. It contains the titles at the top and the names of each player and their stats alongside them. If you scroll down, you'll notice that there are 137 records and 8 fields, which the program must read in. The program also creates an array called data, which holds the information between each comma on the data file. The data array is as long as the integer fields, because in the data array there must be a spot for each piece of information on each line from the original file. An array of objects called pplayers is created, which will be given values to store for each object. Finally, a temporary object is created to allow the sorting of objects in the array via a bubble sort. The program begins by displaying the titles of the fields that will be output. Next, the file titled nbadata.txt, which is my CSV file, will be read. The first line is read individually because it contains the titles instead of data, meaning it should not be included in the data array. For the rest of the lines in the file, any quotation marks in the line are removed by replacing the quotation marks with a blank space. Next, the data variable is set to hold any information located between commas via the dot split function. For each object in the object array, p players, the attributes such as name, team, games played, etc. are set to equal the value in the data array for that particular field using a setter. In order to display all of this data in a nice table, the program will also count the number of characters for each value in the data array using the dot length function. Then the program uses a for loop to add spaces until the total characters reach a set amount. In this case, the for loop variable j is set to equal the length of the value it at inside the data array at point zero. It will continue increasing by one while j is less than 20, meaning that the field will contain 19 characters before the next field is displayed. This code is located in a for loop, which runs while i is less than the records variable, which means that the process will continue until the data for every record is displayed on the screen. The program then asks the user how they would like to sort the data. Any field can be selected and placed into forward or reverse order, alphabetically or numerically. For example, if the user decides to sort by names in reverse order, a bubble sort will compare strings in adjacent spots in the array and swap them so that the names appearing later in the alphabet will be listed first. The bubble sort makes use of the temporary object created at the beginning of the program, storing variables while they are moved between adjacent spots in the array. The user can also use the program as a query by inputting a search term which the program will scan for in the selected field. In this case, the program will scan through each record in the selected field to check if the search value is located within any of them. If the search term is found, the rest of the information for that record will be displayed. Also, the data will still be displayed at a table because the program will continue adding spaces to the data in each field until it reaches its specific limit. Now let's take a look at the program's object class. It is titled players and contains a private variable for each field in the data. In the object's constructor, all the variables are set to zero or blank, but the user can change these attributes when using the main program. The variables are private rather than public, so other programmers cannot make changes to the variables when coding. Instead, mutators such as setters and getters must be used to change the values of the variables. For each setter, a string, double, or integer is sent to it depending on the field's data type, and the variable that is being set becomes equal to the sent value. For example, the setter titled setName receives a value called pname, and the variable name is set equal to pname. 
the variable now contains a value instead of being blank like it was before. In order to use these variables in the main program, they must be returned using the getters. A getter does not need to receive a value, instead it just returns the value of the variable. Now that I have explained how my program works, I will provide a demonstration of it in use. As you can see, when the program is run, the data is displayed in a table in the same order as the original CSV file. Now we will sort the names in reverse alphabetical order like I explained earlier. In order to do this, the user must first type 1 to sort by names, and then type 2 to sort reversed alphabetically. As you can see now, the table has been outputted with the A's at the bottom and the Z's at the top, reversed alphabetically. Next, I will perform a query search by looking up all the players with 73 games played. In order to do this, the user must first type 11 to search by games played, and then type 73 to search for all the records that have 73 games played. You will now notice that the output list is much smaller than it was before, and all the records have a games played of 73. You will also notice that the data is still in reverse alphabetical order because of our previous sort. Finally, I will search by name and input AL as my search term and every player with a name containing AL will appear. To do this, the user must first input 9 to search by name, and then enter AL as their search term. Now, the list only contains records with names that contain AL adjacent to one another. This is done by using the dot .contains function, which searches for value throughout an entire string. I hope that this presentation helps explain how to read in data from a CSV file and sort or search for them. Thank you for listening.